The Pope has this morning released an important new document on the environment and climate change. And he levels a lot of criticism at what he calls an inadequate response to the global climate change crisis. Pope Francis is set to make history by issuing the first ever comprehensive Vatican teachings on climate change. Now, issuing a pretty stark warning, the head of the Catholic Church and also the sovereign of the Vatican City State has said that Earth will become uninhabitable if there is no concrete action that is taken on climate change. Issuing a stark warning, the head of the Catholic Church and sovereign of the Vatican City State has said that the earth will become uninhabitable if there is no concrete action taken on climate change. Pope Francis warned the world is approaching the point of no return on climate. Amen. Nearly 300 experts from around the world have come to the Vatican to discuss the latest developments in climate change and formulate an urgent response. Pope Francis and dozens of religious leaders have signed a joint appeal to governments to commit to ambitious targets at the upcoming UN Climate Conference in Glasgow. The church leaders also promised they would do their own part to lead their faithful towards more sustainable behaviour. Experts say the COP26 summit is a make-or-break chance to curb greenhouse gas emissions. Um, the Pope, uh, with some very strong words, do you think it's going to move the needle? Um, I believe it will, yes. Hello, welcome again to this channel where we talk about spiritual matters. In today's video, we are going to talk about Pope Francis and the gospel that he has decided to preach. Not the gospel of Jesus Christ, not the gospel of repentance, but the gospel of climate change. But what is really behind the climate change movement? Is it really because of the love of the planet? that these people care so much that they want to save the planet or there is some other hidden agenda behind this climate movement. We are going to dive into this topic and learn what is really behind this idea of climate change. At the UN this week, new warnings about the global threat of climate change and the need for governments to respond. The Earth is dying. We are not saying this. 14,000 scientists across the world are. According to these scientists, the vital signs of the Earth are deteriorating. This means that climate tipping points are now imminent. Climate change is now rapid, widespread and intensifying. That is according to a devastating report by the UN's Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, which warns that many human-caused effects are now irreversible. Scientists warn today that climate change is warming the planet to the point where it's causing irreversible damage in some parts of the world. Well, Anna, these reports that are coming out in the scientific community are still heralding the same message that climate change is occurring. If you're not on board the climate change train, get on board the hottest seven years. I mean, look at it. Scientists say droughts, heat, wildfires, and other dangerous weather events are becoming more likely and severe due to climate change in most places worldwide. This summer, the effects of climate change have been hard to miss across North America and Europe record heat, wildfires, and warming oceans. Climate Report paints a grim picture of what the world will look like if humans don't reverse course very quickly. Some of the world's top scientists say we only have until 2030 to stem devastating climate change. Now, the serious effects of, the, of climate change is hitting the planet faster than expected. On the brick, brink of catastrophic warming, that is the latest warning from the UN Climate Change Report. Scientists saying swift actions have to be taken right now. Now to a dire warning about climate change. The climate time bomb is ticking. A new climate-related alert. For more on the climate crisis. They are ringing alarm bells. They've called it a five-alarm fire, a crisis, a global emergency, what have you. They're telling us we need to take action. It's scary because it's existential. It really is. But it's deeply important not to look away from this. Despair and doom are going to keep us frozen in fear and in inaction. Let's keep our eyes open. Let's protect ourselves. Let's face the challenges that are already here. We need to elect leaders who will make climate the climate crisis a top priority. The message that is heard all over the place is a message of being afraid. Be fearful, be afraid because the world is going to come to an end and you have to elect some people who will help you to be able to find the solutions to tackle this problem with the climate change. When the message is about fear, you better believe that there is something behind that message that is not really good. Let's listen to this. 
The world is going to end in 12 years if we don't address climate change. To avert the worst consequences of climate crisis, we have nine years left. We're going to pass the point of no return within the next eight to ten years. I am here to say our house is on fire. We must change almost everything in our current societies. And scientists tell us that this is the decisive decade. We no longer have time to leave out the science. We no longer have the time, they say. That's why we need to elect leaders who will make climate crisis their top priority. But there is a different perspective. Listen to this. Well, the environmental movement as it is, as it is today, yeah, I think it should be looked upon as a, as a scam. And uh, simply has been co-opted by the, uh, the leftist as their cause. As a cause to gain control over the world's population. The argument of reducing the population, all the matters of birth control, whether it be the pill, or homosexuality, promoting that among peoples, uh, the, the transgender movement and all the rest, they're all about attacks on, on human life, okay? And I think the current environmental movement is another form of that attack on human life. The environmental movement today is actually more than just a movement, it's a religion. They're turning it into a religion. In fact, the former head of the Vatican Bank, at the time that uh, Archbishop Vigano was overseeing the Vatican finances. His name was Ettore Gotti Tedeschi. He said that this is the future one world religion. This is why, you know, after COVID, they have to go, they have to keep beating the drums for this environmental Gnosticism, because that has to become the one world religion. The ecological crisis is essentially a spiritual problem. The sin against the environment, the ecological sin, the sin against the environment, the ecological sin. Human beings are looked upon as the enemy of the climate. Human beings are looked upon as the enemy of the earth. We are the polluters. We are the problem. We are the ones, they say, who are causing climate change. And it's because there are too many of us, and many of us just have to go away. I mean, they, they, they don't talk about the Georgia Guidestones. I suppose most of these environmentalists don't even know about them. But the, the fact is they're very significant. In Georgia, the Guidestones... Uh, the very first provision made there is that the population of the, of the world must not exceed, what do they say, 500 million people, period. That's like a commandment of the new age. That means that a lot of billions of people have to die. We have to go away. They have to make us go away. How are they going to do it? Famine and, uh, and disease, pestilence of their own making. Like these are all contrived. These are programs they're undertaking because they can afford it. They have the resources now, and they control over the resources of the world. The idea is that we are the enemies of the earth, and we, the earth is not here created by God to serve us, human life. We are here to serve the earth. Uh, we're here to serve the, the goddess, the earth. We're here to serve this world. It's the total inversion and perversion of what we read in sacred scripture, that God created this world to be our home and our, at our service, right? And we are meant to be good stewards of the world. The sin against the environment, the ecological sin. And uh, polluting the world and, and, and so on can, be, can actually be sinful, that's true. Damaging what God has created can certainly be sinful. Uh, it's, it's kind of interesting to see that uh, so many of these environmentalists are, are died in the wool abortionists too, right? It's okay to destroy human life, right? Actually, it's just doing the world a service by destroying human life, because human life is the enemy. So, no, they're not concerned about human welfare and the, good, the, the happiness of human life, except perhaps their own. Um, but they do look upon our species as kind of a, uh, a gigantic... Uh, weed or parasite that has to be severely cut back. The idea of sustainability is not a bad idea. But the problem is that uh, the enemy, like the, the leftists, can see this cause as an opportunity for them to gain more and more control. We also, I think, have to face the reality that the devil can appear as an angel of light, and like the communists can, can come in, and they can see an opportunity and decide to use this to their advantage, to gain control over whole populations, I mean, even over the whole world. And uh, ultimately, what is happening now, and I think um, Ettore uh, Gotteschi is right, 
that they're trying to make it a religion and the foundation of a one world religion with earth worship. This is a big problem. And the problem is, I don't know about you, but when people tend to care, care more about the planet than the created beings or the people on the planet, that becomes a big problem. The Bible says that love thy neighbor as you love yourself. The Bible does not say that love the planet first and then love thy neighbor. It says love God, then love your neighbor. And these people, as you just heard, they don't care about the planet per se. They just care about how many people are on the planet and they are focused on reducing the number of the people on the planet. But the Bible says that God sustains his creation. God is the one who sustains the planets. How does Pope Francis fit in all of this? Let's keep listening. Francis is Laudato Si followed by the Pachamama idol. It's all part of the earth goddess world-worshipping mentality that Francis is bringing in with him to basically foster not only, uh, well, one world government, but a one world religion. And Francis is essentially the, their point man in getting this done. Now, this is where it gets crazy. Pope Francis is seen worshipping idols. Watch this. You know, you read those, those documents that were published for the Amazon Synod, right? There was, first of all, a draft document that was, that was pro produced for the Amazon Synod to consider. There was another draft of it that came out, right? There was a Corita Amazonia, I think, a document of Francis that came out afterwards. And all of these, all of these documents are just absolutely dripping with personification of nature. Uh, like the, the Amazon as the great mother womb and the rivers throwing through it, giving life. And I mean, all of this is, is animism. It's all that pagan, native pagan religion. The, ho the whole thing is couched in those terms. It's impossible to read these documents without getting almost, as a Catholic, sick to your stomach to realize he's actually promoting the religion of Amazon, uh, of animism, the old pagan religion that saw you know, spirits in the jaguars and spirits in the turtles and spirits in the snakes, Pachawama. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, all of nature is, is, is animated by these idle, idle, idle spirit forces of which you and I are a part. We are just, and I are among them as one of them. But this world pagan religion, even predating the gods of Olympus, is now back. And Francis is basically the, the single greatest purveyor of that false religion mm. through the Vatican. And the Pachamama business is actually part of that overall program mm. of promoting, well, he's got environmentalism, but again, he wants to give it a religious foundation. And the Pachamama is actually the religious part of that foundation of environmentalism that comes through the Vatican. Because, as I say, that's his mission. His mission to complete the, the work of Vatican II, to actually uh, lay the groundwork and start the impetus toward the one world religion, the worship of the world, and to see ourselves simply as part of the world and nothing more. Well, I can tell you that I've never seen anything like this, especially from the leader of the Catholic Church, the Pope himself. Remember when Pope Francis said that all religions lead our path to God? I think he meant it. This is what he meant. He really doesn't see anything wrong with this.
I mean, look, the very people who are behind this environmentalism are the ones who are pushing all this evil stuff right now. Uh, so you can see that environmentalism for them is not actually a matter of right and wrong. It's a matter of policy, and it's a matter of actually imposing tyranny and gaining control over the whole world. We have to reject their environmentalism as a religion. Uh, so... Um, <clears throat> Environmentalism as such is a false religion. It is an anti-Christ and anti-Christian religion. And it is, I think, uh, Mr. Signore Tedesca is absolutely right when he makes this very sage prediction that it is destined to be, it is uh, sort of earmarked to become the world religion. Um, and, and Francis is very much a prophet of that religion. Looks like Pope Francis wants to combine all the world's religions together in order to form one world power or one world religion. And as Christians, we have to reject that. You shall have no other gods before me. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Uh, we see you in the next video. God bless.